So let's watch this. Cold outside, what shadowy hints of my easy to miss okay. social life is dying, and I also want to argue about how pop culture characters fit into alignment charts. So it's time to like drama wins. Oh no! Wait, no. Uh, the uh, Joe Cat videos for D and D. Okay. Yeah, I'm watching it right now on my live stream. Are you like there on Twitch.tv watching? Oh yeah, I gotta go to that. I forgot. It's okay, it's okay. We can start over, man. Like, I guess I might as well bring Twitch on my end, just in case, like, if there was any comments that I need to keep an eye out for. And, like, mute the volume on my Twitch on my end. Because, like, holy freaking crud, this guy's like... He's a special kind of special person. He's a special kind of special person. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Heck, he even like miss he misspelled the uh name of the uh acronym of commander. He put D C M R. Is literally C M D R. <laughs> I mean, what's up with this guy? What is up with him? It's that, so cold outside. What shadowy hints of my easy to miss social life is dying, and I also let's continue. about how pop culture characters fit into alignment charts. So it's time to make like a bunch of famous voice actors and dungeon some dragons. Odds are, plenty of you dorkbags have heard of the hobby, but have as little understanding about how it works as I'll be right back. You entertain chat for a bit. Childless adult who doesn't care about where they live, so we'll okay. have a roof over their head. I, I gotta like, like shout out racial. I gotta use the men's room. Do a refill. So print out some character sheets. Go shopping for some loaded dice. Have some inspired snacks. Call up all those. You can only tolerate and put hey, people on Kimber, let's do some in-bar. Welcome, in Welcome to a crap guy. Oh, here it is. Uh, oh, oh, I guess. Do you like hitting things? What am I saying? Of course you do. Everybody does. I most certainly do all the time, like now. <laughs> and hitting things is the best thing about I'll try. You can hit literally anything you want. Better yet, you can hit it with a big fuck off axe while flying into a bloodthirsty rage so potent you could be forgiven for mistaking it for some kind of super rabies. The barbarian is the best class for hitting everything and everyone hard enough they explode into a huge puff. So of death is a lot better at entertaining than I am. But I'll do my best. Twelve for your hit die. One of the only times you'll ever use a D12. But it does mean you'll be soaking up hits better than my pillow soaks up tears after I take a look in the mirror for a few seconds. You start with just about every important combat proficiency and any weapon of your choice. And if you're taking recommendations, I highly suggest going for the dual wheel chainsaw shotgun I laser ears. Ooh, and they have built-in cup holders. Look at that. No tool proficiency. Okay, I guess, guess I'll talk about that. Anyway. You pick them to add to your character for backstory purposes and then forget they exist because so, for D&D, &D, we're going to talk about D&D &D right? character. Yes, so, for D&D, &D, in fact, who even needs my own classes, people, and even the shiniest of and I play a trickery domain cleric. And you avoiding traps, spells, obligatory social and events, and his deity is the traveler, a chaotic evil deity. Friends of force that foes will fear for all their fannies. During your I am Devin. To hit, but at the game that you are better at hitting everything else, and not just that, your muscles grow to the size of crack face. Oh, um, anyway. I don't care that the back to the D and D character. Intelligence is a dumb stat anyway. That's why mine is the number that comes after three. I mean, what does it do? Um, I'm I'm trying to explain. I'm Devin. I'm trying to explain, and you're cutting me off. Frail spellcasters. Anyway, my um. Immobile tank. My D and D character, Untitled. my tiefling, he is a tiefling variant, which sort of specialized role. He can fly. Also, the spells he uses currently are sanctuary, which makes my enemy roll a DC save in order to attack me. Jack of all trades, master of none is still better than uh, sorry, I'm just gonna have, have to hide for pause. the rest of the fight because they've run out of class features and spell slots. If the sword and shield were an RPG class, it would be the bard, one that's good at I'm gonna have to pause that one. You can cast spells, learn okay, tons of skills, right. support allies, harm uh, enemies, harm allies, support enemies, war crowds, boo crowds, and most importantly, lay dragons. It's the most versatile uh, class and it's very okay. strong okay. to fill okay. literally any role. So who even needs anything else? Need DPS? Okay. Or swords? Need a tank? College of Valor? Wanna make rogues? I'll pause the video, everyone, until it returns. College of sit down. Shut up and listen. Your most important.
Well, I'm not gone. I'm just like, I'm not wanting to explain my character yet. No, I'm not in full yet. Yeah, I understand. I thought you had another phone call or something. Yeah, he'll be back. Uh, yeah, so that's my life buddy that's gonna be the uh, entrance to me with the ND. Well, continue on with my screen here in a minute. Once he returns. Yeah. Oh, man. Things are too far for a career, Shannon. The things are too far for a career. Yeah. It's quite a something, isn't it? I can't believe that one guy really put around $30 to switch. Oh boy. Be right back here in a second. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, everyone, I'm back. Well, I'll wait for my moderator to join up back with the stream. And when he gets back. Well, I've been here I've been here the entire time. Oh, I thought you had a phone call or something. No, I was trying to explain my character, and then I kept getting interrupted, and then... The oh, I'm sorry. Kept, uh, I'm sorry. what we said, and so it caught me off. Oh, I, I'm so sorry. That happens yeah. with me. Uh, let's continue. Feature, Bardic Inspiration is like the little girl mm -hmm. Oh, my VTuber just went invisible. <laughs> Slash intangible. <laughs> concentration of pure awesomeness, you can allow anyone else an additional die to roll and add to almost anything. Think that weak-ass wizard won't be able to make the con save against that poison attack? Inspire. The fighter needs to land the killing blow on an enemy with a high armor class? Inspire. Your wingman just told you about a hot piece of slizz that walked into a high-class tavern and that he needs you to hype him up to be able to talk his way in and maybe nab a few extras on the way out for you? You best bet your ass that homie's gonna be inspired. In fact, screw your wingman, you can do it yourself. Jack of all trades and expertise means whatever you're bad at, you're suddenly good at. And whatever you're good at, you're suddenly unbelievably amazing at. Nothing can stop you, what you want to do. except a pretty face. By playing yeah, games, well, we're we'll watching, uh, like, all these videos by Joe Cat. Everybody knows you have to follow yeah. the contract or else Matt Mercer so, house and throw uh, when those are done, like, your living room. the stream will finally come to a close. All wizards are smart ass um, all rogues are kleptomaniacs. And tomorrow we'll pick up Final Fantasy VII again. Here on the champ uh, here on the stream okay, channel. In some way. Around like two or three when it, when you get off work. Like this, like I'm off work dance, tomorrow. Dance, oh, you're off work tomorrow? Of ways to yeah, what time do you want to do it? Right you know yeah, let's do it around two till like I don't know. Uh five if you got the time. Okay. So that was the barbarian. But sometimes the best in the squad. This is the bard. Who can smite like a boss by harnessing the bitch slap of God. With a mace that even ogres will flee. You'll cast and crush things with glee. Some think they're not strong and those people are wrong. Welcome to a crap guide to D&D. <laughs> Joe Cat, you are timeless. 
The support is someone everyone wants on their team, but nobody wants to be. Lucky for you, the cleric is like a support that decided to buy a taser after being too fed up with being told to heal the barbarian who ran into a 1v20 encounter. Nice! Uh, there's fandoms in the D&D world that are so crazy into their deities that they turned their fangirling power into something... Yeah, I'm seeing the stream lagging on my end. ...proficiencies as a fighter and the self-sustaining capabilities of a paladin that's been juicing with you... Yeah, that's what it's doing on my end. They have so many teeth... Yeah, I'm gonna have to solve that later. ...disposal on top of all that, that dungeon masters all over the world universally agree to ban clerics from the game so as to not make encounters absolute nightmares to give proper challenge without throwing approximately 20 black dragons at one cleric alone to keep it balanced. Spells like Flash Gordon, Buddy Cop Weapon, and... Does it's probably due because of, like, the signal output from Streamlabs. ...cultured swine consider the cleric a designated healer. Anyone who does has either never played the class or considered the sword and shield a viable weapon... ...and, like, how it's, like... ...unlike most other classes, you pick... ...taking so much, like, data right now. And plus, being online doesn't help either. ...nerd, sunburn, and my axe, nobody dies, nobody cares... ...while streaming, like this. ...seriously, with how versatile and independently strong you can... ...well, you can make up an entire party and purely... ...yeah, that's true. ...amen and bust down Tiamat's door demanding her lunch money. And she would just build her own toilet to give herself swirly so she wouldn't have to endure the kind of bullying you're about to give her. ...channel special limited use effects depending on your domain. Did that ever... Hold on, hold on, like... ...power of the gods can make a zombie... ...so did you ever get swirlies in school, by the way? Uh, it's when somebody takes your head and dumps it in a toilet and pulls the trigger and the water swirls around in your face. No, I was actually part of the wrestling team. Nobody dared to actually cross me. <laughs> I'll have to say, when I went to elementary school, I never got a swirly. As a matter of fact, a lot of people didn't really screw with me. Like, whatsoever. They, they really just didn't want to mess with me. Because, like, I was that one unhinged lunatic that tried to be a hero on the playground and stop bullying everywhere, only to get literally pounded into the ground like hamburger. Like, but, uh, yeah, that's a swirly when it comes to toilets. Uh, it's messed up. I was actually a bully. You know what? That says a lot. Run away from you like it's regained its ability to smell and realizes you've been sleeping with your Jesus blanket that you haven't washed in months. Or as useful as Guiding Strike, where you can choose to add 10 billion points to your attack roll so you'll be able to swap. Not out the goblin. Flies deuce being whipped around on a string like a yo-yo. But I was the type of bully who would beat up other bullies and also beat up victims. Like a gym two weeks. Oh, okay. So you were an anti-bully. Divine intervention. Where if you are a good boy or girl all year, pray huh? happy thoughts and burning down. Uh, hold on. on people who are innocent too. No, no, no. Anti-bully. It's like being an anti-hero. You do good things, but you also do bad things. Yeah. <laughs> you are an anti-bully. You not only did good things, but you did bad things. But I was also very calculated in when I did bad things, so that I wouldn't get caught. <laughs> Oh, you sly dog. The heavens will part and the literal gods will stop playing their game of Jenga to fix whatever dumb problems you and your party have gotten into. Now, I was just the one guy that literally tried to save everybody on the playground. And everybody wanted to be gone because of it. I know how to play cleric. Amen. So, on to the next video. I don't understand tree huggers. What is the environment ever done for us? Yeah. It's not like it provides oxygen, resources for tools. This one is technology or anything important like that. And it's the druid. The various species of plants and animals required to keep the ecosystem alive to continue to feed mankind's insatiable appetite to destroy, consume, and rebuild in his own image, ultimately resulting in the annihilation of the very world that brought him into existence. Nah, fuck all that. The environment clearly exists for us to skin innocent animals that are minding their own business so we can wear them as high fashion. I mean, just look at bears. All they do is steal my chips and shit in my backyard. Well, guess what, Yogi? It's payback time. And what's that <laughs> with an undercover? Wait, we got five followers. Welcome to a crap guided. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. In less than a month, man. I'm streaming. The druid is what happens when a ranger decides to fully commit to being a furry slash hippie instead That's of really half assing it because they're only trying to impress that sexy dryad they met in the forest at one time. They're primarily a cat. Give it up for those people, by the way. Warlocks with their sugar daddies. They deserve it. Or sorcerers yeah. with their rich magical parents' inheritance. Druid's magic comes from Mother Nature. From first-hand experience, I can tell you now she's an absolute bitch.
<laughs> Somebody put the dollar or the swear jar for Doe Cat. You know, Amy actually likes Twilight. I mean, the first movie's not bad, but I've heard like the rest of them are like garbage. Moreover, they gain a I don't care. I like it. I don't care who dumps me. I don't like it. I'm not gonna say that I hate it. I don't care. Yeah, I just haven't seen any of the movies. You know? Oh, I have the uh, entire uh, movie. I'm in the entire trilogy on DVD. No, wow, that's interesting. And now you know how to play Druid. You're welcome. Okay, so that was Druid. Fighter-Man, Fighter-Man. Oh, it's a fighter. We're going with the fighter class. Hit some more. Outside combat is quite a bore. Look out. He is a fighter-man. Oh, this is gonna be good. Fighter-Man. Gee, I wonder what it does. It's a goddamn mystery. Who knows? I'll say it because nobody else will. If you pick fighter, odds are you're also likely to pick human because you're basic like that. And that's not just me saying that, it's science. Human fighters pop out of the woodwork like Rick okay. and Viagra because people are incapable <laughs> of choosing something unique even when they're given options like playing as a cobalt paladin who prays to asteroids just before they crush an unfortunate man's cabbage cart. Just look at me, for example. Artistic phenomenon. Fighter man. Of the satirical talk yeah, fighter man. He's really just made a spider man parody of it. I need these lies coming out of you. Everything I made is <laughs> Come on, Master Chief. Let's get the fuck out of here. Fighters are the purest essence. Well, he just ran off with Samus. Things hard and fast. Getting into the thick of the fight, and hey, you get out of here. We're not talking about you. They're all focused. Just about every sci-fi fan ever. As well as being straight up easy baby mode, because you get to start using any weapon you want. Heavy armor, some ranged options, a free cheesecake, and a complimentary belly rub just for picking the class. Seriously, everything about it is geared towards being so noob friendly. Even a Monster Hunter longsword player will be laughing at you. If you feel fine during combat, you can heal yourself. Oh, I feel bad about that. That one in the same turn and that's at fifth level not to mention you getting more you feel bad about that than any other class. yeah because like he just he just said like obviously the uh, fire class is for beginners or like baby beginners to pick how you want to be hitting the bad guys like being a magic bitch that can actually take a hit or ride a bitch while you cut down a fool or go all out sensei mode and just decide you want advantage for every attack this turn so you're going to absolutely destroy a bitch but odds are knowing most fighters out there champion is the best bet because it's basic yo we heard you like fighters so we put more fighter in your fighter. Just be sure to make your character laugh <laughs> and grizzle face middle aged straight. Put more man. fighter in your fighter. A mysterious and or tragic and or vengeful backstory just to fit the bill. Don't want to get too creative now, do we? And now you know how to play fighter, you're welcome. Hammer bow, sword and shield. There's no limit what you can wield. Plenty fights, you have fought. Demon Lord's just another thought. This class Yeah, a lot of people when they start out they play main and they hear yeah, I'm gonna be real, like, at least I'm starting out with Fighter Class 2, but I wanna go with, like, heavy swords. I want that big Chungus sword, you know? If you, you want, want a big sword, there's only the three oh. melee classes that allow that. Because, bitch, uh, which is? Welcome to a crap guide to D &D. One is a paladin. Another one is a barbarian, and another one is a just a regular fighter. Spectrum. It can be used okay. For punctuating arguments, expressing a salty loss, and beating up nerds, or it can be used for good, like self-defense, artistic expression, and beating up nerds. See, I'm learning stuff today, folks. Beating up science and mixed martial arts. Foregoing additional filthy weapon proficiencies. The paladin is more like somebody who is noble. A noble, they heal, but they also like attack. But unlike barbarian. 
they heal and attack basically that's the paladin yeah in a nutshell yeah i'm not a religious person i might as well stay fighter i said i'm not very much of a religious person i might as well stay fighter I mean, like, oi. It's not like, okay, so hold on a minute, let me talk about this again. It's not like I have a problem with religion or stuff like that. It's just I have no need for it. You know? Yeah. I mean, for me right now, I got to focus on so many things and religion's not going to get that done. But uh, anyways, yeah, I I'm not a religious person. I'm not a gold occultist person. I'm not even like a well, political person. I I'm just a person. <laughs> you know, I'm just a person. I, I don't want to be tagged with some faction. Like in the fourth dimension like that. D don't get me started. Let's continue. It makes this section much mm -hmm. prettier, and also because key translates to poop and tie, that's how I'm going to refer to it from now on. You gain more and more poop as you level up, and you can spend your poopy points on various skills to do all sorts of things, like sun people, reroll saves, mask yourself, and turn invisible, and any other number of crazy things based on which anime you want to imitate. I would <laughs> have can say so you can hey, wait a minute, is that a thing? Laser earrings, if it weren't for the fact that every other archetype was just cooler in every way, wearing fancy outfits and taking the time to actually learn how to fist pro. Uh, dude, is that a thing? Like. Mimicking any powers from anime for what is this character again? Uh, the monk. You mean D and D? Yeah, in D and D, like with the monk, you can like mimic any anime power or some crap like that. Or there's magic items that can do that. For the monk? No, there's magic items that you can do that with. Oh, well. Like, Joe Cat just said basically the monk can do like a whole bunch of anime powers, like he and like Chopper and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, thinking, like, wait a minute, that's a thing? Okay. You're cutting out. Oh, I'm cutting out on your end? Hey? Yeah, well, I can hear you somewhat. Okay, maybe I'm talking too loud. I'm buffering a little bit. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, I like I didn't know the monk can do anime powers, and you said items do that as well. But I mean, is that like chakra and like key? Can he do that stuff too? The monk. Well, you'll learn more I think on Friday because like there, there's no there's no way to dumb it down. Oh, okay, all right. Properly. Oh man, what a tough decision. Do I want to use a poke? I'm still here. Yeah, I know. What an enticing decision. I'm really gonna have to think about it. Don't stop! Don't stop! We're in luck now. And now you know how to play monk. You're welcome. Uh, he just did a Dragon Ball reference. We're moving on to the next video, folks. Yeah, as soon as it loads. Ew. Okay, here we go. This one is the Paladin. I didn't tell you. Has traveled so far and wide that not even the Pokemon. I'll talk to you at like uh, about D and D after the video. No, oh, okay. Or making their wealths of great hobbies, their miserable lives are missing out on. Fuck no! It was to enforce the mighty name of the one true weapon pairing that triumphs all others. And if anyone were to step out of line, I'd bring down the wrath of which Terras children tell their parents to scare them before bedtime, and then collect the aftermath of. Uh, that's the thing. For great fertilizer. Welcome to a crap guide to D and D. Do you want a tank? Do you want to fight? Do you want a class that'll instill fright? Take up some plate and keep the goblins in sight because you want to make sure they eat this paladin smite! The paladin is the first on a short list of hybrid style classes, stealing a mix of features from both the So basically, like, when they smite people, they're like... <laughs> right?
Joey? Joe? I'm down here. Yeah, so like the paladins, like when they smite people, it's like heretic. They scream like heretic or something? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so kind of like Warhammer yes. in a way, but not. Got it. <laughs> And the cleric, meaning it's better at physically painting the walls with blood than a it's crazy. Gooder at grammar and spelling than a fight. Yeah, but like, when classes where role playing becomes sort of like what role playing in my role playing game, they really should have put some kind of warning labels. All right, hold on. I smite you for the name. Well, paladins are more like I smite you in the name of whatever god I worship. That yeah, basically. Will, uh... Oh my <laughs> for Odin's sake, Jesus, why? Oh, it's funny. I'm not submitting to this shit. If I wanted to follow some sort of code, I'd become a pirate so that I could at least plunder some booty while I'm at it. Otherwise, fuck you, gods. If you want me to play your game of ethics, you can kiss my shiny plate mail. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, fine. Just follow the code and don't do anything stupid that'll cause you to lose your pal in prison. Are you the one that told and Jordan are partying on Friday, by the way? Crash. Like the other all what? Going to try and join our D&D party on Friday? This Friday? Am I going to join? Heck yeah. 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 I'm gonna try to be there. Um you know, like kinda like be there or be square. <laughs> you know? We start at five PM. Five PM? Alright, I'll Yeah. So Friday I'm gonna have to hold off on the streams then. Like how how long is like the uh campaign? Usually until 7.30 or 8. Okay. Alright, you be rough with me, but not too rough. <laughs> uh, let's continue. In your grill style physical fighting classes, you gain proficiency with every goddamn combat oriented item in the universe. And yes, that does technically mean that you can optimally play a paladin without a shield and not have to worry about being a less effective contribution to your party. But if you do that, I'm telling you now that you're wrong and I hate you and you're a big smelly doo doo head. As a resident big fuck off bringer of divine justice, your job is to harness the power of holiness or whatever other wacky power, depending on what oath you pick, to have everything else die while they bounce off of your full frontal crusade like a turd in the wind. That's true for just about every combat focused class, but the paladin is especially good at it. What with having the aforementioned mentioned fighter player combo skill set. You get multiple attacks, channel divinity, a free vaccination, casting abilities, more auras than that one silly anime that nobody likes, which means you'll be so jacked that you're Oh, come on, don't dog on Jojo! They look like a typical character from said silly anime that nobody likes. And later yeah. hands, a pool of health you can Jojo's Bizarre Adventure? Point to your ally because that's all they deserve for yeah, I've heard that. Check the obviously booby trap. Yeah, he dogged on it. The real reason anyone picks Paladin, and that's to never cast any actual <laughs> spells, but instead use your spell slots to imbue your weapon with various flavors of smite. Because what good is striking down the heretics and heathens of the realm. Is that Toy Story? He just... Hold on, hold on, everyone. I gotta go back on that. Did, did he literally just do a Toy Story reference? Yes, he did. Heretics. Heretics are everywhere. Buzz Lightyear and Woody. Oh my god. <laughs> No! Oh my god, this is... Oh, Joe Cat, you, you are a card. You are a card. Attacking equivalent of your god sports team I respect this man. Pointers, brain freezes, sick More than I should. Cheese! Cheese for everyone! <laughs> Sorry, I meant force. Force is what it says. <laughs> and, now you know how to play and now he did Buzz Lightyear from the cartoon show. Deus Volt. I forget what that means, Deus Volt. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot what that means. What does that mean? I forgot what what means. Deus Volt. How much of us know what that means? You're the D&D &D guy. You, I think you would. I thought you would have known. Well, I only know about spellcasters. I don't really... <laughs> That's a bit concerning. There are, aspects that I'm not, there are certain aspects I'm not a pro of. Okay, hold on. 
Continuing. Next video is... Oh, Archer. It's the Archer. Okay, everyone. If there is not a, a joke from the adult Archer cartoon show, I'm going to be disappointed. Because, like, there's got to be an Archer's or an Archer joke from Archer somewhere in here. If he doesn't do that... I'm going to be disappointed. In next reaction stream, I'm going to do a challenge. Like a challenge, a punishment challenge. Here's the other of the bisexual style of classes where it likes Spider, but it also likes Druid and flips between the two depending on which one looks cuter at the moment. Hell, it even steals a few things from Rogue because it's so indecisive. And despite the name Ranger, you're not actually restricted to use any sort of ranged weapon in order to be effective. As far as combat goes, you get the usual fighter, but not really fighter set of features. Fighting style, all weapons, extra attack spell, casting D10, hit, die, hey, Macarena. From Rogues, it steals the ability to channel your inner chameleon and blend into the environment. Except instead of hiding in the shadows and watching where you step, it's more like putting on makeup. So you need to take some time, have a good look in the mirror, maybe look up some tutorials while you're at it, then start over when you realize you're using the wrong shade of foundation. From Druid, it steals some of that being one with nature flavor it's got going on, and a whole lot of spells, but not without a few exclusive spells of its own, like having a target explode a bunch of Not Jerry out of the target on the ground and turn them into proximity Yeah, 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 it's a tiny art. Or bits of enemy uh, I guess I'll, I'll make it taller next time. No, no, keep it that way. I'll be lucky if I don't get you want to say tiny? You want to say teeny tiny? All right. You know what? I'm with it. I'm down with it. Use the power of racism to decide what kind of creatures you're going to perform extra potent hate crimes on, and preferred terrain where you can pick your favorite environment. And after trotting around picking flowers or litter, depending on what it is, you can become a fantasy bear grills, which is basically real life bear grills except with a cobalt crew filming you instead. And if you worry that that sounds too situational, and that if you picked a forest terrain and the entire campaign took place in the snowy mountains, would mean the feature would be more useless hmm. than a football player who got tapped on the shoulder okay. and started clutching their knees, crying in the fetal position. Don't worry, you're right, and it is. What isn't situational? Is just about everything else involving All right. You can sense what kids are trespassing on your lawn and then not have to worry about the weeds that might otherwise slow you down from catching them and giving them a good weapon. When it comes to flavors, you don't really trust us. You can totally use melee and still be useful class. You have Pokemon trainer with a gun like Rogues, but even dodgier, literally a monster hunter thinking with portals and pew, 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 pew. All right, let's address the beholder in the room. The vanilla incarnation of the ranger has a reputation of being less useful when compared to the other classes due to questionable abilities and how they function. That's not to say the class can't be useful. I didn't close my door real Consider the ranger situation huh? sometimes underpowered features to leave some need to close design. my door There's real nothing quick. wrong about talking oh, about okay. changing how certain skills work if that happens to be the case so that you can have more fun at your role playing table. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's not about how many numbers you can do to the bad guys, but whether or not you can shoot spikes out of the ground while firing bolts from your heavy crossbow atop a feather velociraptor. And now you're going to play ranger. Okay. Deadly crossbow uh, uh, bolt gun on a back of a velociraptor. What the heck? Is that a thing? As a child, I had to grow up on the streets, wrestling yeah. alley bears for thing. food, and fighting guards for my own. Why are you one of those? Streets that I knew I couldn't trust anyone but myself. And as a high-level spellcaster, certain spellcasters can summon dinosaurs and stuff. To exact my revenge, and finally put my restless hunger. Oh, this is the rogue. So is that why you're standing in the corner of a tavern conspicuously? That's something deeply Also, my character, you can check if the high levels, I can turn it into a mount and let the party members uh drive me as a mount. Right then, I'll see you later. Oh you were supposed to be deeply interested and ask me more about my backstory. That's a thing. <laughs> Yeah, or I can turn being another cog in the machine. Or I can turn party members into a uh any type of wildlife and I can ride them as a mount. Oh so you can not only be a bottom but you can be a top. Let's go. Gamer since it lets you interrupt someone trying their best because they weren't doing it right. However, if you want to marry Sue it up even more than you are here, you also get expertise. I can also speak with insect dinosaurs. So you're a you're an animal whisperer as well. You're you're Basically, Dr. Doodle. 
Yeah, yeah I'm well, basically Dr. Devil. The other main difference is <laughs> that I'm also like a very, very, uh, I'm like a satanic priest, but also like Dr. Doolittle. But also, when I get to high level, I'm going to be dimension shifting a lot and teleporting a lot and just like very, very hard to reach. That, you know what? That fits you. That fits you, man. Four goddamn features dedicated to make you more difficult to pin down than figuring out if that teasing banter you had with your friend actually hurt their feelings or not. You can dodge when it's your turn, dodge when it's not your yeah, turn. Yeah, I think dodge talking to wildlife can save me in certain situations. The unique trait of the rogue is their exclusive language, thieves can't. Thieves can't what? Not allowed yeah. to clue because it allows you to say a whole bunch of jargon that somehow translates into a completely different sentence. Timmy's having tea with the local blacksmith actually means Because, like, if I'm in the sea with the, with the shark stealing, the and it's about to eat me, I can use my magic ring, talk to the shark, and be like, hey, man, don't eat me. I'll feed you something else. Like, okay, so I want to put it like, honestly, like, dude, don't eat me. There's a horde of hungry goblins over there that are a lot more tastier than me. Go get them. <laughs> that would be a lot more funnier. Or I could mind control it with my magic ring. It would have three different abilities. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. I can locate wildlife, I can mind control wildlife, or I can speak with wildlife. Wow. Oh, that is pretty handy. Not gonna lie, that's pretty handy. Bard, except less yeah. talented or attractive, and allows you to hocus pocus somebody's wallet from three miles away. Mastermind is straight up Sherlock Holmes, complete with the assholery and catchy theme music. Swashbuckler won't stop bugging people to 1v1 them. And Scout, which is yet another better alternative to Ranger. Your job is to make sure everybody knows how much better you are at doing everything. Because when the going gets tough, you know the party's going to turn to you. Uh, of course, he put the TF2 Scout in there, like, I am the Scout here. <laughs> of course, he put that there. It makes sense. I'm also very, very super stealthy, too. Yeah. Like, with the ranger, of course, he put TF2 Scout in there somehow, because, like, who wouldn't? <laughs> TF2 Scout? Yeah, like, the Scout Ranger, he just did, he put the TF2 Scout in there with the bow and arrow. <laughs> like, oh, no. But, like, it would have been a missed opportunity if he didn't. One day and ask you to please pick the lock and the door to the king's castle because the bard accidentally kicked the guard in the genitals trying to seduce them. And you'll gladly show them all the skills you've learned from growing up in such a harsh and unforgiving environment that was once your home, forcing you to learn questionable means and morally ambivalent beliefs in order to survive. Just try not to cut yourself on that edge while you're at it. And now you know the rogue, you're welcome. Rogues are super edgy. Got it. Magic is dumb, yeah. stupid, and makes no sense, and my brain hurts the more I try to figure out how it works. Except when warlock. Are We're going into Warlock. With their colorful, flowy robes and giant the three classes not to trust are Bard, Rogue, and Trickle. Oh boy. Experience others answering to a higher power, some having a codependent relationship with the arcane, and some lucky enough to have their parents bang a mystical creature and receive a small genetic loan of a million mana. Welcome to a crap guide to D&D. Because all three of us are oh, wait a minute, what? What? Hold on. So, what he said with the warlock, if so, if a wizard like does a thing with like a beast or like a dragon or something, they and they have a child and it has like a whole bunch of mana or something, is that a thing too? Yeah, you you can uh, you can breed hybrids. Oh, behave. But most DMs will steer away from that because, like, pit players have... Wild imaginations. Got it. No, yeah. Well, a lot, some people take it... Some people take it over the top. Yeah, exactly. Wild imaginations. Completely out there imaginations. I got it. There ain't nothing wrong with that. It just really depends on, like, the dungeon master. Got it. Well, now it has more to do with the players. Oh, the players and the dungeon master. So, like, everyone? Everyone has to either agree on it or it's not considered okay. Okay, alright. That makes sense. It really does. 
your stupid hats ready, it's time for the casters, where your weapons suck, your armors suck, and your martial skills are closer to that of the average D&D player. Instead, you'll be relying on the mystical, magnificent mass of magic, except in this case... Yeah, that's why I was telling you earlier, like, not to make those sorts of comments, because... Yeah, because, like, it'll, get, it'll, 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 like, take somebody off or get me in trouble. Got it. Monopoly games. That's right, a pathetic yeah. D6, which likely means the DM won't have to do much to make you piss your pants in fear. The Sorc de Soleil's metamagic feature means you can enhance the spells you cast by paying off the essence of arcane with the inheritance money you got from your magical parents and allows you to influence your spells to take on a variety of effects to your liking. Its effects include, but are not limited to, biased AoEs, angry AoEs, spells that gotta go fast, say, no, I totally got you, I hit your shirt, clothing counts, get an extended spell warranty, double penetration, or even cast with the sound of your armpit parts if you don't feel like talking that day. And you can do all that and more by using your sorcery points, which has got to be the two most absolutely nerdiest words you could ever put together in a single phrase. It's also a weirdly effective secret, which because it allows your magical BDSM to stop so your spell slots can catch their breath and recover. With archetypes, you have squishy clerics, zippy zappy, casty blasty, watch for the lightning, it gets nasty, darkness, 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 scaly in denial, and the only one that really matters, the Wheel of Wild Magic! Where you and whatever other lucky souls nearby get to experience the high octane thrills of randomness. Think your pathetic magic missile just won't cut it? Don't worry, with the right kind of luck, it could suddenly open up a wonderful Hi. portal to the fire flames. Who knows? What is this? A game show? Full effects could happen due to your gambling addiction. Let's spin that wheel and see how wild we can get. I think he broke the wheel. Yeah, I may have a little bit too hard because of my stonkingly huge muscles, so we're just expecting for a while. Now, the main difference between the three arcane casters is how they get their magic. Of course, Joe Chat put it that way. T and Warlocks keep having to pay interest to their demon lord shareholders. Sorcerer's magic comes from the fact that they were born inherently talented instead of needing to do any actual work. That's why your casting ability is charisma, because we totally need more of those, and just because you can cast spells doesn't necessarily mean you're smart. But who cares what's smart when you can cast big spells with big effects so your big numbers can turn the big baddies into big piles of jibbled eggs. Experience points. Insert fireball joke. And now you know how to play sorcerer. You're welcome. <laughs> Turn into a potted soiled plant. You want a fireball joke? Fine. Lots of spicy meatball. There you go, Joe Cat. That's a lot of spicy meatball. Yep. Hey you, yeah you sitting there. It's classic, it's old, but it's good. Boy, I wish I could cast spells, but all I got is an expendable firstborn child and a willingness to work with a questionably immoral arcane master till the end of time. Well, that's just the exact sort of motivation we like for our employees at EDB Incorporated. And if you sign up with us, we'll be sure you're treated in a way that you deserve for assisting in furthering our goals to bring about the ruin of the entire multiverse. All I need you to do is sign here and agree to give us the eternal of your mortals. But on the bright side, we have dental. Welcome to a crap guy to deal. Warlock. Let's go. Can't kill me. But only as much as you have one family member you keep seeing at reunions. But aren't quite sure how you. I would take half damage of all fire damage. Forgotten realms. Yeah. From the other casters is that the amount of times you can cast your spells before running out of spell slots is absolute shit. Instead of having a set number of spells for each level of spell slot, you get a maximum of four spell slots for all your spells up to fifth level, and that's it. And a few other ones, but nobody cares about those. The flip side is that the spells you cast are always at their max level, and instead of having to take a long rest to get those slots back, all you need is an hour. To have a wank, have a biscuit, and you're back on your feet. But you know what? Fuck real spells. You may think you're a caster, but really picking this class is purely an excuse to do nothing but cast everyone's favorite cantrip, Eldritch. <laughs> cast it at weddings. Funerals. Beach parties. Or you can just cast it randomly because the party's taking five hours to buy a single dagger from the shopkeeper and you're bored. Aside from casting nothing but Eldritch. <laughs> so lightning! Got it! That it's the greatest game of dress up dolls. I cast lightning! So that it suits you better than my form fit Kieran assless chaps. You can cast <laughs> animals without needing to cast a spell, go straight up invisible whenever you want, but most importantly, there are invocations that allow you to customize your Eldritch so that whenever you shoot your gobbledygook at whatever poor sap that looked at you funny, you can pull them forward and do your best scorpion impression, snipe them from two blocks away, or make the beam of arcane destruction smell like strawberries if you like. But it's not all fun in Eldritch because remember, you've signed a pact with a patron, so your power is being loaned to you from an all powerful arcane sugar daddy. So you will have to pay interest if you want to make sure all that magic stays nice and so basically, we're like, okay, so the arcane sugar daddy bit, um, basically every magical pimp lord ever. I hate my brain. 
Sometimes at tables you will meet spellcasters like that, though. Yeah. I hate the way my brain thinks sometimes. In your Eldritch sack. Luckily, they're not like bank loans. As a fighter, though, you'll be very weak against a lot of mental type spells that uh, creatures use. Oh. Oh well, that's something. Yeah, which means. What? So basically, uh, you'll fail a lot of your uh, saving throws when it comes to uh, shielding your mind from mental type attack. Oh no, no, no! Like uh, I, I saw the like the demonic dummy mommy. Uh, in the video, like, hold on, like. What the heck is this? The choice of being bossed around by a literal devil who decided to make you their favorite person so they're gonna be your mommy for a little bit. Yeah, uh... Norse. What mind hitting that? Mmm! Okay, moving on. Ironically, refuses to let you die because yeah. you still owe him two platinum fairies who are just straight up assholes. God, so you're basically a cleric now. Literally Cthulhu, but forget all those because the only real option is to have your patron be a magically possessed sentient sword and shield that yells fuck when you swing it. Basically, you have such a huge okay. amount of options to choose from with how you build your warlock. It's very unlikely any two warlocks will be just the same. So get your shopping baskets, light some candles, have fun customizing. Oh, and remember, you have to sacrifice three more babies by the end of the week or you're fired. And now you know how to play warlock. You're warlock. So, sacrifice three babies every week. Somebody's going to be a very busy baby maker. Or kidnapper. You know? I don't know which one it'll be, though. Uh, all you players that play Warlock... All you players play Warlock, I apologize. What? So that way they can sit like a loyal dog. Yeah. Um. Out of retrospect, all you warlock players out there, I I I I don't know what to say. Just don't do that to babies or your own. It's not worth it. It's really not worth it, or the criminal record. Well, if somebody kills babies and then they turn them into zombies with a spell, and there's an undead baby. <laughs> I'm scored now, thank you very much. Like... I thought I was done with Resident Evil, but no, Resident Evil comes back in D&D. <laughs> yeah. Which one's this? The wizard. You're a wizard, Harry, let's go. Just watch, people are going to cancel me for that joke, too. I chose exactly the perfect spell for every situation. Well, you answer Fireball for every question. Which appoint person within Fireball distance? What I mean is you can't expect a big damaging area of effect spell to be the answer for everything. Maybe try some different spells. Maybe Minor Illusion to trick the enemy. You can find a Fae or a Fiend to serve as your familiar or even Prestidigitation. It has a surprising amount of uses, even though it costs nothing. I'm about to Prestidigitate all over your desk if you keep suggesting lame spells. What I'm saying is you should expand your horizons. A wizard is the apex of the arcane, the ultimate utility caster, and one of these days you're gonna find yourself in an encounter where Fireball isn't gonna... Where'd he go? What the fuck? Welcome to a guide to D&D! Fireball! That's a big one too. The OG, the frail 
old man with a stick that shoots magic missiles at a few goblins and then has to go to the and say he receives a registered hex offender. The wizard is the most powerful class if you ignore any other classes that are stronger, which are all of them, because this thing is more fragile than a single layered sheet of toilet paper that's been soaking in the soggy crack of the bridge troll's ass cheeks. This class is the sorcerer's Th That's an image! He does all the hard work for none of the recognition. You get saving throws and intelligence and wisdom instead of constitution and charisma, so sure you'll be able to ace that pop quiz and not have to worry about being distracted, but you won't be able to hold your I'm looking at Chad Firebolt's party yeah. mansion his chromatic dragon dad bottom. If you're looking for the silver lining, the wizard is definitely the heaviest case of be careful who you call ugly in magic school. The wizard's spell list is thicker than the Storm King's thunder thighs. You gain spell slots like a shower drain gets hair. I have a couple of thunder thighs. You have spell slots to recover depending on your level. Best of all, at higher levels, you even get the ability to cast your favorite low level spells as many times as you like. But who are we kidding? You're likely going to be dead before you reach that high. Either killed by your own fireballs or killed by all your pissed off allies who were caught in your own fireballs. But hold your <laughs> there, Mr. I actually believe you. Collateral damage. That MP4. Your spell book because wizards have short term memory loss, and unless it's a cantrip, you can only cast a spell if you have a three step tutorial with pictures to color. But the work doesn't just stop there. The stronger spells at higher levels are going to need expensive magical components to cast them if you don't want to embarrass yourself with arcane out dysfunction and suddenly your finger of death feels more like a finger of mild discomfort. People say wizards are the utility casters because of the massive amount of spells at their disposal, many of which are apparently great for a wide range of situations. I'm here to smartly inform you that those people are stupid. Use fireball and only fireball. Nothing but fireball. Just fireball. Just fireball. Just fireball. <laughs> because they are the nerds of D&D, wizards have an unhealthy amount of knowledge of all of the different schools of magic. So instead of having their archetypes based around a certain theme, they get one for each of the aforementioned schools of magic, which is too damn many to go over, and frankly, I don't have the time or gummy bears to last a whole lecture. Instead, I'm Yeah, that makes sense. School of magic, and also war magic, because fuck you. And I'm gonna do it all in song. <laughs> Evocation elements to burn a shocker, freeze your friends, necromancy spares the dying, or you could just resurrect them. Abjuration keeps you safe and almost makes your armor fair. Divination helps you sets to tech immune and talk to bears. Conjuration portals and makes stuff for free. Transmutation turn things into other things with enchantment. Buck the buffer in between and delusion. Visual tricks to prank the brain with fear and silence. Learn and go invisible. Pretend you're someone else's dad. Disguise mystery, take on their life. War magic is like tank mage getting lots of defense, flexing as you cast. <laughs> and now you know how to play wizard. You're welcome. Oh, hold on, everyone. Like, let, let me find that image. Because, like, what? Now, I'm a guy that loves VTubers, okay? Like, hold on, like, where's that transmutation thing? Because, <laughs> like, there's one VTuber, if she finds out she can do something, she'll do it. She'll turn Bowser? <laughs> no. Into Bowsat. I'm talking about Chibi Doki here, folks. Okay, like, do not tell Chibi Doki this is a thing, especially in D and D. She'll jump like that in a heartbeat. She's already got a thing for Bowser's feet, a uh, feet fetish. If she... no, just, just no, just no. Don't, don't tell Chibi Doki anything about D and D. Good lord. For Hades sake, nobody tell Chibi Doki anything about D and D. Oh, this is the song. Oh, the music realm. Is there any lyrics to this? Probably not. <laughs> no, there's no lyrics. Yep, yeah, we'll skip that one. Uh... This is the said magic is dumb and stupid and makes no sense. Artificer. And he wields a sword and a shield. So why use magic when you can use big brain energy and the power of science? And I know how much nerds love science, so much that they won't shut up about it and one day start making weird advances towards their Texas instrument. Listen, we all have our urges, but seriously, get a server room. Welcome to a crap guy to D D. It's 
about damn time we got another intelligence caster. The stat is about as commonly used for spellcasting as your bedroom is used for sexy times. The artificer is an inventor who decided traditional nice. by accomplished wizards and scholars are too mainstream and decided to come up with their own magic spells and items after reading two articles by angry moms from Baldur's Gate who discovered casting real spells can actually give you genital flumps. Checkmate sorcerers. Instead of that, you can tinker with items to imbue them with special properties like turning it into a flashlight, turning it into a scented candle, or turning it into a phone that can only record and play vines. The best part is that once you give the item the properties, it lasts forever. So go have fun enjoying your seven seconds of fame before the service shuts down and you become a struggling vlogger. And speaking of messing with the natural properties of items, as you level up, you gain infusions, which allow you to turn that sex toy you hide in the dresser from a basic vibrator to a vibrator. Infusions and infusions <laughs> are not limited to boring stat increase, Thor's hammer, <laughs> item dupe glitch, and go, go, get it, blink a boots. This go go gadget blink the boots billion, which is so high, what the heck to any of i respect it also it seems like you didn't do an archer joke so yeah next reaction live stream i'm gonna have to find a way to punish myself if i do a laugh or, or a punish challenge oh i'm gonna lose that hard you secretly stored a charge of fireball being the new class that it is the artist only has three subclasses so far no i'm not gonna cover the new ones that come out stop asking i just want to go on vacation with my sword and shield already the this is like a drunk doctor and gains a few healing spells, can buff allies with the power of drinking and gambling, and can help you grow closer bonds with your pets. If you want a big fuck off gun, the artillerist can create an eldritch cannon that can either fire three different kinds of artillery or just sit there contributing nothing while you marvel at your amazing craftsmanship. Because keeping track of more than one thing on the board is hard, isn't that right, Dungeon Master? And lastly, the Battlesmith, where you decide to stop being a puss baby and join the fight with a mystery solving robo dog sidekick. <laughs> Ranger. Overall, the artificer loves making robo dog using loads and loads of magical items, which means you'll probably forget. Oh, the heck yeah! Give me Rush. I want Rush from Mega Man. Give me Rush in D&D. &D. Hell yeah. Just make sure to keep them under good so the rogue doesn't steal them all while you're long rest and suddenly you wake up to the sound of Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture. Now you know how to play Artificer. You're welcome. Artificer. Okay. That's something. You get a Robo Dog pet. You know the best thing about a robot dog? You don't have to clean up after them. <laughs> Okay, so next is the uh, fifth edition of races. It's the song. It's really good, but it's a little bit too long for this live stream, everyone. So we're going on to Goblins. What's wrong with you, pathetic, sad, procrastinating dungeon master? Can't come up with a worthwhile and interesting comment. Somebody called Goblin Slayer. We got Goblins to kill. A totally different campaign you wish to run one day, but ultimately know you never will because you're in a constant state of prep work and insecurity. That's okay. Everybody knows no matter how basic the combat is, it's going to take forever anyway thanks to any spellcasters and people on their phones. And it's mostly just a chance for the DM to stall for time while they figure out the next story beats. That and an excuse to show off whatever art of the thing the players are fighting that the DM paid three grand in commissions or miniatures to make for them. Or you could just grab whatever the nearest thing on your shelf is and say, fuck it, we're fighting this little bastard today. Welcome to a crap- Oh, it's so cute! By the way, that's Joe Cat's mascot slash uh custom plushie he sells. Or he used to. Yeah. He for a while before he quit uh YouTube entirely, he was selling those little goblins as plushies. Online. What? God, why did he quit? Goblins were originally created by the Hobbit. Uh, who one day so, like, he fell under fire for, like, a song about women. Like, big women, little women, uh, large women, short women, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Like, he likes all types of women, and he got under attack for it. So, it's messed up, really. They got really lazy and just it's the internet. They attack you for anything and everything on it, man. They can attack you for even biting into a cookie. Where the biggest asshole is the leader, and everybody else is just sort of used to being treated as poorly as a retail worker. That's not. I wish I was kidding on that. They will attack you for just simply eating a cookie on a live stream. The most basic goblin squads can turn an eight level party into the aftermath of the white castle. This is because goblins are a culture constantly. Why? They're trying to get world first and have a knack for throwing themselves at the. 
Because I'm reading the potato long to a lot of three. also somewhat smart. Leaders of Goblin Tribe consistently placing first in tournaments of... Dude, I'm not attacking you for eating potato logs. ...alongside creatures such as wards, which are oversized wards... No, I mean, they might. They might. If you ever decide to play as a goblin... I'm sure they don't, like... Like, at least the people out here probably don't understand what a potato log is. ...combat like you're at a friend's house and the parents started arguing. ...and Fury of the Small, where you get to punch below the belt and make the enemy's voice go up as many octaves as your player level. Now that's the they they probably think it's a chimichanga. But this is D and D, which means everybody breaks the rules more than an episode of Yu-Gi-Oh. And the fact that goblins are so adaptable to so many situations and environments means that there's no limit to how they can be portrayed or what they can be used for. You can make them mindless monsters that fill the last few empty rooms of a dungeon, or adorable little scamps that the party will adopt the instant they see them, or design them so unexpectedly attractive that it'll make people question if they've discovered a new fetish or if it was there all along and this was just its awakening. You too can throw an endless supply of XP at your party while giving. Oh. Um. Uh. Yeah. Moving on. Making feelings on stomping on an innocent little cutie pie that was just moving. Do you know what a potato log is? What? Do you know what a potato log is? I've never ate one. I've heard about them, but I've never eaten one. You know? It's almost like a handmade french fry. Oh, okay. Huh, that's I interesting. Like, I've heard about them. I've never eaten anyone. So, like, it's, um... So, what you're saying, it's a freeze-dried french fry, basically. Uh, no. They cut up... They cut up potatoes and then they, uh... Made it into a frog. Oh, okay. Are you sweetie petite? Ow, oh, son of a bitch. And now you know how to use goblins. Booyag! I think there's one or two more videos after this. Bar... Uh -huh. Wait a minute, it's Barbarian again. Barbarian? Well, yes, but actually, no. And then there's the character sheet, and then Dungeon... There's uh barbarian again, alignment, character sheet, and dungeon master. Dungeon master's twenty two minutes. And the character sheet's fourteen. From the top, D and D is for dorks. What with all the complex words and math. Playing a fighting class for the character sheet that's going to be easier for you now playing D and D. Yeah. Athlete who occasionally looks at their old high. It doesn't look too too complicated, but you know. Um. If you did a spellcaster at level five, you'd be looking at seven sheets worth to keep track of. Uh, what about a war here? A war is more like three sheets. Okay. I don't care. I want like people that have big swords that make big numbers go swing, and off goes a monster's yeah. head. When you get to high levels, then it'll be more like five sheets. Whereas with spellcasters, when you get to high levels, it'll be more like fourteen sheets. <laughs> wow. I don't care. I just want a giant yeah. sword that causes a lot of damage with big numbers. <laughs> I like doing a lot of damage. Just like how you threw every single game coach put you into. Welcome to a crap guy to D and D. I was with the barbarian again. D and D is the best because you can literally hit anything you want, including the other players. And what better class to hit everything than the barbarian, who's the best at hitting things and never stopping hitting things? Oh guts! You have around the Googleplex of hit points by level two, and unarmored defense means the chunkier you are, the better you can block and avoid attacks because the enemy is too distracted at how your fat hairy tits are flailing about. Better yet, avoid traps, spells, social events, and laundry like you've just moved out of your parents' house and are trying to get your life together. But enough about defense. The real reason to play barbarian is to hit it very hard, going. Bloodthirsty. You can channel your anger into the might of a thousand dads who just felt the thermostat get adjusted, and during your rage, you become the world's greatest goblin juicer. You gain bonus damage, advantage, all the damage, and any and all physical attacks. Oh ye! Day one patch pecs. As you gain levels, you get progressively angrier and angrier, getting a straight up flat increase to your movement speed and extra heavy swing when you land a crit, and become too angry to die potentially forever as long as you keep hitting. I've seven minutes time with it. Throw everything away. Berserker, if you want to swing your weapon like a tape to a ceiling fan, mistaken stupidity for bravery. 
Every and have Age everything to no death. Cards. Alternatively, the yeah. Warriors like a gateway furry, where you channel your favorite Robin Hood crush and pretend everybody is Prince John. Battle Ranger can become a really pissed porcupine. Storm Herald if you want to make the environment around you as pissed as you are. Zealot if you want to be a diet paladin with a smite and aura that's made with zero sugar. And Ancestral Guardian if you're a scared little bitch. Offense is the only offense, and I will have none of these tactics in my combat encounters. What? You thought I figured my brain so I could think harder and waste time when all that planning What happened to the third VTuber out of out of the session? What do you take me for? Some kind of wizard? Well, what? What happened to the third person? Oh, uh, they're creating the model right now. And okay. they're going to be joining me next month. Okay. Yeah, um, they're developing my fiance in the third dimension. And they're going to be voicing her too. So, you know what? Awesome. Do you, huh? Fuck you, I'll beat the shit out of you. You think you're better than me just because you can count? I hope you like being pavement lotion because you're going to be filling all the cracks in my driveway. So, uh, as a moderator, I'm the guy who bans people and kicks people out and has all the power, right? Yeah, so, like, you take care of all the bad little gadlins in the stream and, like, on the Discord. You're the goblin slayer of the internet for me. <laughs> you literally take down all the bad people that are literally breaking the law. It's like this. How oh, dare you break the law in my town? You're out of here. You are basically the law. However, I could let their actions slide for one silver. Uh... No, you're not that type of law. As a matter of fact, if I believe they truly fixed themselves, I can unban them though after an investigation. It's how it works. I take them to VTuber uh, court and be like, all right, so mm -hmm. this person leaves behind a comment and says, I'm sorry, I won't do it again. And, like, I get to decide their fate if they get to come back or not. It's called VTuber uh, Chat Court. So, like, y you're the um, officer that arrests them. But eventually, like, I'm the um, chief that can decide if the, like, they can be good again, come back and be good, or just, like, keep them away. Mm-hmm. So, uh, that's how, like, a moderator's job works. You punish them, but later on I get to choose if they're rehabilitated or not. And if they can come back. So, that's, like, how it works. But who's gonna keep me in check in case I become, like, food happier or whatever? That would be my job. That would be my job, man. Like, I have a feeling that I would go mad with power at some point. I'll keep your head level. You're not going to be the only moderator I eventually get, man. <laughs> you are the first, but you won't be the last. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's continue. Oh yeah, head bumping. Listen to that rock music. Heck yeah. Hi, I just wanted to take a sec for more people to notice. Alignment. And this disclaimer, most importantly, this part, I don't actually want to upset anybody. It's all part of the character, and I hope everyone keeps that in mind. We good? Okay. Everybody likes personality quizzes, right? See what your spirit animal, how burnt of a toasted slice of bread you are, what's your worst trait as an employee based on the brand of cereal you like to buy. They're great because most of the time, if you don't like what the quiz results give you, you can look up which answers contribute to what result and just get the one that you wanted in the first place and then brag about it on social media. Wow, would you look at that? I'm such a Slytherin because I'm so cunning, right? Yeah, well, jokes on you. That was all an intelligent ruse. I'm actually a Ravenclaw. Or am I? Same with star signs. They're just vague enough that they can boil down to, you're a thoughtful individual who sometimes overthinks things and can be impulsive, but in the end, 
the day wants to do the best that you can for the people you care about while never settling for the worst possible outcome. And I could say I just described a Libra and oh, that, cool. a wow. that just found some straight cardboard. Luckily, Dungeons and Dragons doesn't have any of that dumb personality shit that nerds argue about for hours on the internet in hopes to totally pwn the other side with facts and logic or anything. Welcome to a crap guide to D&D. I found gold out on that last one. An old relic of the past that hurts. Is the way to start fights both on and offline. The DD alignment chart is its version of a personality quiz that no one can agree on. You've likely seen this tic tac toe board being used with pop culture characters being placed in each segment, giving a vague idea of what each of them means. But then all it takes is for you to put someone in the wrong place, and then everyone starts throwing fists as if they had just found out that you use their facial hair razor to shave your butthole. Remember, characters can only be one alignment forever and must only ever do things considered to be that alignment because oh, man. death and development is hard, and when people disagree with me, I take it as a personal attack. More importantly, as a player you get to say what your character's alignment is and no one can ever debate that you're not playing that alignment because you know your character better than they do and they're just jealous and wish their scrubby sheet was as cool as yours so they can suck fat nards <laughs> Small smooth brains think lawful means the literal sense as in following the law, but instead what it really means is having a strict set of rules, whether it be moral, legal, or because your boss is telling you to do it. It's one of the most Yeah, it makes sense. 99% of the time when a lawful character sets out to do something through a promise or obligation, they actually follow through, which is why they make great fitness instructors, because when they say they're not going to fuck your mom, they actually don't fuck your mom. A lawful good act is keeping the promise because it's the right thing to do. A lawful neutral keeps the promise because it is a promise and they're going to stick by it even if fucking your mom saves the universe. And a lawful evil keeps the promise because they're going to fuck your dad instead since he technically didn't say anything about him. <laughs> Inversely, the chaotic side of the chart are for characters that don't give a fuck about their integrity and do whatever the hell they want because they feel like it. Small smooth brains will use this alignment as an excuse to be a total wang rod and have an inconsistent character with no definable traits. Also known as the chaotic alignment's more recognizable cousin, the stupid alignment. Why do I feel like that's you? That's the approach to playing their character. The most that is me. I ignore every uh, person's well-being. Balance breakfast. A chaotic good is stealing from the rich and giving to the less fortunate. A chaotic neutral cheats to win a tournament and uses the winnings to eat something aside from a bread sandwich every night. And a chaotic evil will lie about not fucking your dad again and then burst into his bedroom as soon as you blink like a really slutty weeping angel. <laughs> The good and evil sides of the alignment chart are pretty straightforward. Good is if you're a good person, and evil if you're a jackass. But that's a small, smooth brain surface level understanding of good and evil, as in no, just because you don't stab people doesn't mean not stabbing them is a good act, just because stabbing them is a lot easier. Good acts are ones that go out of the character's way to do good and help others, sometimes even to the good person's detriment, and oftentimes even if there's no promise of any sort of reward in return for the act. Like using your own hand to get a friend's favorite Lego set out of the toilet, even after a night of really stuff. In contrast, evil is pretty straightforward, i.e. actions that could actively harm people or not caring about how those actions could knowingly harm people. An evil uh, act would be being the person who threw the Lego set into the toilet, knowing full well it could be somebody who's the But good and evil doesn't just mean motives. It's yeah, true. so like, you're somewhere in the middle? It doesn't mean having mean means makes it any less mean. Yeah, so like, I'm not good, good but I'm not evil. Yeah, I'm chaotic neutral. Yeah, you're, you're a chaotic, chaotic neutral. neutral, got it. Whereas an evil act would be chopping their nipples off. Then my <laughs> opinion is chaotic evil. The neutral so I lean towards to corruption more, first to but I don't fall on either side. Uh, I will do good, good for a price. More characters that are okay. and like to do whatever tickles their pickle the most, depending on the situation. Maybe they'll be employee of the month for one boss and then shit on the desk of their next. Basically, wow. the neutral ends of the alignment chart are the most pure and concentrated, like the curvature of my butt cheeks, and do basically anything and everything that could be considered the essence of that side of the chart. And of course, the middle ground, true neutral, aka the one that's always playing devil's advocate for literally everything, like they spend ten hours a day discussing opinions on Reddit. And there you have it, the totally accurate, totally objective descriptions for each side of the alignment yeah. chart with no room for any other interpretations whatsoever. And if anyone tries to argue otherwise, they can suck fat nards. Also, never let players pick their own alignment because when they do, it actually looks like this. But that's totally because I'm such a Gemini and we don't think people are self-aware enough to be able to categorize themselves without being subconsciously influenced by their own personal biases. And now you know how to use alignment. You're welcome. Oh. That's something. All right, next is I believe. Yeah, character sheet. What is this? What is this? Why do I need to know animal handling? The fuck is Arcana? The shit are hit dice. What's a proficiency bonus? Why are electric pieces so stupid? Well, strap in for a formal education, ass hair. I'm gonna reteach you how to do math because let's be honest, you still use a calculator to add and subtract single digits. Welcome to a crap guide to D and D. Uh, you okay, man? Yeah. You saw that, right? Yeah, I just said yeah out of nowhere, but that's because I thought you said something due to the echo. 
It was a repeating of what we said prior, so I thought I was answering you. Oh, no. No, no, no. Like the calculator thing, man. Uh, Joe Cat did the calculator thing. You okay? Chat, I think Joe Cat may have broke my moderator. <laughs> Oh no! This is your character sheet. Your character cannot exist without it. However, it doesn't always have to look like this. It could be a simple flashcard, a scribbling in a notebook, or an app on your phone if you like being spoon-fed like a baby who laughs at the phrase pee pee poo poo arm out. And when playing as a character, <laughs> baby, you will refer to the character sheet whenever you have to roll the various kinds of dice oh. to the outcome of your actions. Many are intimidating. Yeah, my humor's pretty, like, low-tier basic. Weak-ass bitches. It looks like a whole lot, but get a hold of yourself and take it one step at a time. The first person to voluntarily stick something up their butt didn't get anywhere by crying about how intimidating it is to stick something up there but they just did it and look how far we've come first of all at the top we have the basics name class race background and dumb butt speed quiz results these things will determine later things so don't worry about those things until we come to them later but if you don't know what you want those to be yet that's okay we can mosey on over to this tower of pimps which will be the most important part of your entire sheet ability scores these are your basic stats, the strengths and weaknesses of your character, and the main determiner of whether you're going to be snooping or spooping when yeah, you're the character sheet, the one that does all your stats, that's the, the one you got to focus on the most, because you, the most, the and how well you, you will be rolling based days. on what your stats are. It also but, uh, determines the weapon damage. No, okay. Weapons, but we'll get to that later. Next is dexterity, the little bitch version of strength. It's your hand-eye coordination, reflexes and balance, and how well you can hide your handheld when you hear mommy and daddy stomping up to your room like Godzilla, where strength is about how you <laughs> dex is about Godzilla. Under. Dex can also be used with what are called finesse weapons. Uh, level seven, I'm going to be shifting shift 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 into a tier. Damage in case you <laughs> Constitution a is your general vitality. How healthy you are, your endurance, and is used for rolls as frequently as a millennial eats breakfast. It mostly only affects your overall hit points, but it's still fairly important. Uh, and treated like the amount of candy in your pantry. Is it bad when I say, like, I'm not a millennial, but even I don't eat breakfast that often. <laughs> I barely have lunch at times. I just mostly have dinner. Uh, and snacks, like, snacks throughout the day and dinner, mostly. Would you be considered a baby boomer, I guess? Um, I, I, I would have to say I'm the oldest generation. Like, I'm not exactly uh, a millennial. But I'm considered like what was before millennial. So, like, but I don't know. I don't know what comes before millennial. I think it's called like Gen Z, and I'm like one of the. Uh, I'm the latest edition of Gen Z. So that's a thing. You only realize how little you have once you see well, something you're else with lots of it. Intelligence is dumb. Hey. That is a... I'm not Gen Z, then what am I? Gen Z is, uh, let's see, 1997 through, uh, current day. As far as being born. Oh, okay, so, like, then, what generation am I? Am I before that? Because, like, I was born in 1985. Uh, I don't know, but I'm... I'm a millennial because I was born between. No, Gen Z are the nineteen. 19th... No, Gen Z is late late nineties all the way up to current day. Oh, okay. So like I'm before Gen Z. You you you're like two things before Gen Z. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Unless you pump it up for big galaxy brains. Millennials right before Gen Z, which is what I am. Lots of always things like recalling in okay. magic, religion, and most importantly, defeating things with facts and logic. To generalize, it's book smart, so you know a lot of things. It's also uh, a uh, um, casting modifier for both the wizard I and the wizard. I think baby boomers are 1985. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to look. Okay. Well, you oh, like, I'll be right back. Um, I gotta use the powder room again.
Okay. Uh-huh. Take your time. <laughs> find out oh you're uh what's called a gen oh, well actually no you're a millennial millennials are born 1981 through 1996 so you're also a millennial like me i'm offended <laughs> i don't know why you're, but i'm you're, offended you're, con- you're considered an early generation of millennial and i'm considered uh Nearly the late end of millennial. Oh, classes. Oh, don't go wow. get to spell caps. That's later. a thing. Impatient. Yeah, yeah. wisdom is one that confuses yeah. a lot of people. Yeah, because that was more 1990, like and it ends at 1990. People who think cheese and mayonnaise can exist on a sandwich. No, wisdom is more your street smarts and also general yeah. senses. It's not. And it starts at 1981. Not that experience. And it's the difference between knowing if a plant is poisonous. Is it bad that I don't feel like a millennial? Because they don't want you finding their beloved lemon tree, you damn lemon whores. It's also the casting ability of clerics, druids, and rangers. Well, do you feel like Pete Griffin? If you do, then you you feel like a um, say that again. Do you feel like Peter Griffin? No. I mean, I'm not his size, and I don't have his brain capacity. My brain, my brain capacity is a little bit bigger than his, if not uh, bigger. I mean. I can play Yu-Gi-Oh! Peter Griffin probably couldn't. He probably somehow flipped the desk without playing. I know, right? He would probably, like, he would finally look up the ban list, and he'd be like, What the fuck are these cards banned? I don't get it. What are they banned? I don't understand this. That would be Peter Griffin. Better yet, you know how most people hate reading long context. Yeah, exactly. Like, he probably rage quit upon reading cards. Now, it's more like he would read like two or three sentences, and he'd be like, <laughs> and just fall backwards in his chair and become brain dead. That would be Peter Griffin. I don't even think he can yeah, read I either. Long, uh, card context. What? I love reading long card context. Yeah, but Peter Griffin would like read three sentences of a Yu-Gi-Oh card, and he'd become brain dead. I don't even think he can read. I don't think Peter Griffin understands how to read, because, like, I think there was a whole episode where, like, Peter Griffin had to go back to school to learn how to read. And he failed at it. Uh, you know, I don't know the name's Peter Griffin. <laughs> I can't copy him. His... his Pitch of a voice is really hard to do. Peter, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> are you being Lois? 
<laughs> yeah, I did Lois. I can do Lois is really easy to do. Like Lois's voice is so easy. You just need a high pitch, like super annoying voice, and you can do it. it says a lot about me. Yes, come to my house. Dreams do come true. Okay, why did you sound like Snow White? Uh, I was being Herbert. Oh, her. Ouch. You know, it's kind of weird how, like, Herbert sounds like old Disney Snow White. <laughs> Let's continue with the video. Ability to approach ability, to okay. speaking ability to betting ability. It's your charm, your confidence, and general way with people, whether it be luring them into a trap or aggressively scaring them so bad that they actively jump onto the trap out of fearful compliance. And it's the casting ability for bards, paladins, sorcerers, and warlocks, because remember, you gotta look pretty for the boss patron if you want to get that big eldritch bonus. Now yep. that we're done covering ability scores, we can go over how you get them. And there are three generally used methods. If you're a wee baby who needs to meticulously make your perfect OC or else it won't be faithful to your precious self insert, there's the point buy system, which works like a basic video game. All your stats start at Eight and you have a pool of points, usually 27, to distribute between them all, with the cost going up to 2 points per ability score increase higher than 13, and the cap being at 15. If you hate math, that's too bad because there's going to be loads of it later, but if you want slightly less of it, there's also Standard Array, which gives you the numbers 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8 to arrange on any of your scores. But if that's still too much choice and you want to put your character into the grubby hands of Arn Jesus, there's the most widely known method, which is rolling 4d6 and dropping the lowest number. This can get you scores anywhere from a whopping 18 to a poopoo dookie 3 if your DM is a sadist and doesn't do grace rolls, but often results in overall chunkier stats. Whatever method you do, each number corresponds to a second number. Oh boy, are you overwhelmed yet? You have to keep track of two whole numbers. What a crazy catastrophic conundrum. Well, don't you worry your stubby earlobes because those big numbers aren't really that important. Their main purpose is to determine a smaller number called a modifier, which means you can totally ignore this number when you actually start to pillage the village. There's a fairly simple mathematical equation to figure out what each number's bonus is, but I know you're a dumb dumb silly pants, so here's a chart. Now will you stop crying about it? The reason the ability modifier is important is because it's what you add to your dice roll whenever they're applicable. So if you have a lot of strength, you're gonna get a little extra oomph whenever you need to punch the vending machine when your chips are stuck. Have low charisma and you're gonna have a hard time convincing the janitor that you weren't the one who broke it. Keep in mind you can still roll great with low stats and roll badly with high stats, but having high ability modifiers makes it so your rolls are more in your favor. Now that you have your scores all placed and your modifiers figured out, now we can determine where those modifiers go, which means we can look at this spaghetti jumbling mess of words. Now don't go running a mommy calculator just yet, it's so easy even Fighter Man can figure it out. At the top here are your saving throws. These are your defenses and resistances to various bad bads that want to smush you up and turn you into a turd. Things like traps, area of effects, most spells, and that little voice telling you that you're making poor decisions. You don't roll these on your own most of the time. Instead, your DM will ask you to make them whenever you're put in harm's way. And you see these little spaces? That's where your ability modifiers go. <gasps> That's right! This way, you can refer to these numbers to add to your rolls whenever they come into play. Look how smart you are. I could just give you a wedgie right now. Next are your skills. These are the Yes, please, Joe Cat, give me a wedgie. In a regular game of D &D. And each one is affected by your ability scores, yeah. just like your saving throws. <laughs> and just like your saving throws, there's this trusty little space for you to put your awesome stalking and or poodoo modifiers. And how can you tell what ability mod goes where? Well, you foolish mortal wombat. Just look at this helpful little parenthesis that tells you what it's attributed to. Go down the list and now you have a reference for what your character's good or terrible at. Got high decks? Well, congratulations, your sleight of hand means you can cheat at poker better. Bad at intelligence? Well, then you're probably not going to know who President Dingle Bloopy Noop is during the history segment of Are You Smarter Than a Cobalt? Now, we're not quite done yet with this long- And then they fall into a pit of alligators. Proficiency is what separates the fake gamers from the hardcore top 500 ultra platinum uber pros. And you can find it in this. Oh, hell ye. Starting at level 1, your proficiency bonus is 2, and it increases as you level up more and more. Basic gist, it goes up by 1 every 4 levels. This number is added to anything you are proficient, aka trained with. And as far as saving throws and skills go, this will be signified by a little check mark. And which ones those little check marks go into is determined by a combination of your class, background, and on rare occasion, race. For example, a fighter has proficiency in strength and con saving throws. So, what bam, what bam! Add those numbers. They also get to choose two skills to be proficient with from this list according to the parent handbook. Normally you would pick your own, but here we're just going to go athletics and perception. Whoop -bang, whoop -bang. Let's say you're also a hermit. You get these two skills to be proficient in. Whoop -bang. Whoop -bang. Always remember, whenever you're proficient with something, it means you get to add this sexy number on top of whatever appropriate ability modifier that's added to the dice roll you make. Proficient in athletics, roll a d20, add strength mod, add proficiency bonus. <laughs> And if at any point you forget what you're proficient in, just refer back to the player handbook for your race, class, and background. Congratulations, you now know how 90% of Dungeons and Dragons works. You feeling smart oh. yet? You feeling like you can wrestle a spider cow? Well, sit the hell back down because we're not done yet. Combat.
Now that we're done with the stat portion of the character sheet, we can look at the combat portion. This section is what you refer to when your DM says clickety-clackety, you're about to get attackity. Up at the very top left is your armor class, or AC for short. This by default is 10, plus your dexterity modifier. No, I said the modifier, not the score. Pay attention. However, this can be increased by the different types of armor. Whichever one you start with will depend on which class you pick. Next is initiative. Whenever an encounter begins, initiative is rolled and determines who goes first and who stacks dice for the next half hour. This number is the same as your dexterity modifier and is added to your initiative roll at the beginning of an encounter. And this last one okay. is speed, which is how much you can move across the checkerboard each turn. Each square equaling 5 feet of movement if you're normal and use the imperial system, and is initially determined by your race, or how well you can try to convince your DM that your character ran track in high school. Below that are the hit points, maximum, current, and temporary. Your maximum hit points is like an anime fan's figure shelf after about two conventions. You can try to fit more, but we all know any extras are going to have to sit on your desk next to all your empty cups. So I had to sell a lot of my shit. Of hit die plus your constitution modifier. Because D&D is a communist game and believes in universal healthcare, at first level you always receive the highest possible roll for hit points. But for every you consecutive did. level, you can either roll for it... Yeah, like, a lot of my collectibles, figurines, I had to sell to survive recently. Like, moving out in the first two months now. I'm I, creating a Twitch account, by the way. What? I'm creating a Twitch account. Twitch account? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. Now let's, uh, I'm gonna continue. The average increase instead, and then your okay. hit points are pretty obvious. It's the amount of blood you still have inside your body at the moment. Reach zero and your character skips 50 seconds ahead of this video. Lastly, there are temporary hit points, which go above the maximum hit points and you only ever get on special occasions via spells, special abilities, or the local grandma lizard folk just made you a delicious bowl of her legally ambiguous performance-enhancing herbal soup. Keep in mind a couple of things. Temporary hit points are kind of like the skin-tight leather jackets from the 90s X-Men movies, in that they don't stack on top of each other and you have to pick which one you want to keep if given multiple of them. And if you're on the floor, or dying from a stab wound, putting it on won't magically stitch it together. And what are these two lonely boxicles? Well, my stupid student, they're yin and yang, two sides of a coin, one for when you're alive and the other for when you're unalive. The former being your hit dice. You have as many of these as your player level and can spend them whenever you take a sip for as long as a single episode of a Netflix original show to recover your hit points. What size of hit dice is once again determined by your class, and you get them back whenever you binge an entire season's worth of a Netflix original show. But what do you do when you're bleeding out while dressed in a 90s teenager's idea of a sexy badass superhero? If your current hit points ever reach zero, you have to look over on this touch-deprived box and start rolling DEATH SAVES where you gamble with Grim each turn and roll your most well-behaved d20 to see whether you luck back to life or have a very awkward reunion with those bandits you killed five minutes ago. Roll a 10 or higher and you gain a success, 9 or lower and you get a failure, 2 failures if you drop a fat stinky nat 1, 3 successes or a lucky 20 and you hop back to 1 hit point, 3 failures and your character sheet becomes the DM's ass-wiping supplies. Attacks. This section is where you throw in all your various flavors of stabs. If you have a weapon or attack of some kind, you write it in here and refer to it during combat. Stab, stab makes funny noise. Stab. Here, the next to it is the attack bonus, aka how accurate your weapon is. No, not the damage. This number is determined by your strength modifier for most weapons, unless it's a ranged weapon like a bow, in which case you use your dex mod instead. Or if it has the finesse property, which allows you to pick either. On top of that, if you're proficient with that weapon, you can add that good old bonus to it too. But how do you know if you're proficient with a weapon? Let's put a peen in. That. Alternatively, if it's a spell attack like Eldritch, your attack bonus becomes your spellcasting ability modifier. Let's take a bard, for instance, which is the slut stat plus your proficiency bonus. Whenever you roll a d20 to see if your attack lands, you get to add this number to the total. Bam, alternatively, bam. alternatively oh, if it's a spell or special item like a bunch of ball bearings <laughs> thrown in attempts to recreate Home Alone that requires the enemy to make a saving throw, you can put the saving throw in difficulty class there instead. But how do you know what that number is? We're gonna put a peen in that too, shut up! Once you have that number, to the right of it is the damage roll, aka how aggressively you're going to introduce the enemy's face to your sword. This is included in the of whatever weapon or spell you are using. Whether it be a light jab at their insecurities, a proverbial pounding of pornographic proportions, or 86 fire damage in a 20 foot radius, just fire them! Just fire them! Those weapons also include your strength modifier to the damage, unless once again it's a ranged weapon which uses dexterity or a finesse weapon which uses either. The difference being that you don't add your proficiency bonus to this roll unless something says otherwise, and most spells don't add any additional modifiers unless their wall of text explicitly says so. And lastly, make sure you include what kind of damage you're dealing so your DM can know that your psychic damaging vicious mockery won't do much against a revenant because their self-esteem is already in the grave. To recap, yes. when you <laughs> to roll 20, add this number, which is these, then if you hit the enemy's AC, you roll these, and add this number, which is this. Spellcasting.
We're going to take a little break from the main sheet to look at this sheet that has a list of all your accomplishments. Oh, look at that. It's blank. It this is a special character that's capable of casting yep. spells. And you're going to take a gander over to this sheet whenever you cast them. Up here at the top, you can put your spell casting class in case you're absurd and tend to forget which spells go where. Your casting ability... There's will an item, item called Necklace of Fireball. Class and your spell attack. Oh, wow. Remember that peen we put in for spells in your yep, cast? You can well, use it seven times Because here it is, the spell save difficulty class, also known as DC. This is referred to whenever you cast a spell that requires the enemy to make a saving throw. And how this is calculated is 8 plus your cast mod plus your poof bone. Once you've got all that figured out, the rest of the sheet is for keeping track of all your spells and slots. You write down the spells you have for each level, how many slots you have total, as well as experience. Oh, oh my brain hurts. Certain casting capable classes apply. Please refer to the player handbook or any other supplementary book regarding your class to find information on what methods you have to go about obtaining and preparing spells. What? Unsure of what spell slots are because your brain's too smooth? Well, sit the shit back dip, you get and listen up. The weakest level of spells are called cantrips, or sometimes level zero if you don't care about hurting their feelings. And they can be cast as many times a day as you want. First level spells and upwards, however, require a resource called spell slots to be cast, or else you'll have to find out the hard way that casting Thunder Wave without having your beauty sleep will make the life or death battle with the Underlord of Darkness a lot less epic and a lot more smelling like last night's kebabs. And if the name Spell Slot makes things too confusing for you, you can use my personal preferred name. For I'm in the Eva bullets. tech. As many mage bullets you yeah. have spell level and how you recover them is determined by your specific class and level. So just like 99% of this entirely redundant video, if you want more information, it's best to read the parking himbo. And keep track of your goddamn slots because if you don't and just so happen to be able to cast five mage hands a day under section three chapter one paragraph 12 of the code of gelatinous noobs the dm has full rights to eat your dice <laughs> <laughs> after looking in the mirror and taking some serious self <laughs> wait a minute is that true oh wow i got somebody in my chat right now yeah that's me oh Batty Brad. Oh, okay. That's something. That what? I'm that Braddy. That Braddy, okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, um, hold on. Like, where, uh, what was it? All right, so let me replay it. Five mage hands a day under section okay. 3, chapter 1, paragraph 12 of the Code of Gelatinous Noobs. The DM has full rights to eat your dice. So when you mess up as a noob, does the DM have rights to eat your dice? When you mess up with what? When you mess up the rules, does the DM have rights to eat your dice? No, you just have to... Ignore whatever results are made, and uh, like if you mess up on what your character can do, um, then you have to tell the DM. Okay, because it's like holy crud. The DM will say you can't do that, and then you want rewind. Okay, no, because like some of those dice are really expensive, and he, he eats your dice, man. You ain't getting those back until like a week later. Well, some people, some people are dice fanatics, but I'm like one of those budget dice people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, <laughs> but like, no, like you're not gonna see that dice until like a week later, at least all of them, maybe a month. That's horrifying. <laughs> That's scary. What the heck? <laughs> oh my. Don't eat my dice. After looking in the mirror and taking some serious self-reflection after the apocalyptic chasm of the divide of the fan base that was 4th edition of D&D, Wizards of the Coast started to take into consideration for the next version of D&D what gameplay features the Did you know Wizards of the Coast used to print the Pokemon cards? Joey. Yeah. Yeah, they used to be able to print the Pokemon cards. Uh, they lost the printing rights when, like, they broke some rules with Nintendo. Oh. Yeah. They, they broke some legal rules. Let's put it that way. Let's put it gentle. They broke legal rules. They wanted to invite to future parties and what gameplay features they needed to take out back and tell to think about the pretty space butterflies. <laughs> One such old yeller victim was the Virgin Alliance they, shark being completely the shattered by the shattered personal characteristics. Yeah, I, I see like the pizza, I see the slug, I see the cheese, I see the tornado. 
hair to know exactly what yeah, person would be the most in character. Personality traits are the broad strokes. It, it looks like a cheese NATO, to be honest. Whether or not they think something's a soup or a salad, ideals are their drive, their principles, what and what they vote for during election time. Or if they don't care what? about anything at all and prefer to stay home to catch a once in a lifetime I do live this. marathon rerun of Animal Planet's The Most Extreme. Bonds are beat, boop, I am a robot, maggot. A fond memory or your favorite glow in the dark bouncy ball that always seem to bounce a little bit weirder than all the other ones. And last week's loss, which 99% of the players don't actually understand and will probably put something in Consequential, like clumsy. Not me though, because I'm flawless and perfect. Oh, you don't think so? Well, could a person with weaknesses do this? All of this other shit. Now remember that peen we put in wondering how you know what weapons you're proficient with? That goes down here, by the way, and that along with basically every other section we've yet to cover can be figured out in this next part. Yeah, I see the mill oh jug head. You know what? Why don't you do something for like everyone there and Type something, let's see if it, like, actually, um, wor uh, spe um, words it out on, like, the, uh, site I have. It'll you know, only let me, uh, do the little... Emojis? emojis. Oh, that's because yeah, emoji only chat only is it. only on. Holy crud. The room is only... Oh, oh, that explains a lot. Hold on, I can fix that. Like, hold on, like, chat rules, like, what's up with the... Chat filters off, like chat appearance, emote attribute, like what the heck? Uh, hold on, like now I gotta go to Twitch and like in like ah, why is it in emoji mode only? Like, what the heck? I... <laughs> like, stream? Hold on. Like, why is it only in emoji mode? I don't know. Like... I think it's like streaming tools. Hold on. Like, why is it only emoji mode? This This annoys me. It's not supposed to be that way. Chat op options. Non-chat uh, privilege. Like, hold on. That's modernization settings. Why? Like, why is it in emoji mode? I didn't even put it in that. Uh, hold on, roles, activities, followers, lists, analytics, streams, like... Streaming tools? No. Extensions? No, it's not under extensions, either. Hold on, like, I'm trying to figure this out. Because, like, I can't believe it's stuck in emoji mode. That's so annoying. Well, I don't know how to change it. Yeah, hold on. I'm trying to figure out follower verification. Phone, e -b 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 chat rules, urban requests. <laughs> oh, man, this is going to be a pain. Like... Stream, you mean tools stream together? Like, what the heck? Why is it stuck? I'm gonna have to figure this out in the future because, like, emoji mode's not, uh, it's not supposed to be there. It's not supposed to be like this. There's gonna be like a three hour project tonight for you. <laughs> I know, right? Like, I'm already going into like what is it's 518. I'm gonna have the video continue to play while I'm trying to figure this out. Like a background, check the player handbook. What proficiencies do I get? Check the player handbook. What about decent traits? Check the player handbook. What's my starting equipment? Check the player handbook. Or any other supplementary book relevant to your chosen race, flat background, all level, those guys, and stars, guys, and rising, etc. And with all that done, congratulations. You now have a completed and fully functioning character sheet, ready to be used once, then completely lost, then found again once you've already redone a second one. Or if you're lucky, one that will be used consistently over the course of several 
several years to the point where there's more eraser skin marks oh, than the pencil lead, and the once firm sheet of paper turning as soft as a tissue person. Oh, you need an email verification. Have you uh, verified your account yet? What? Oh, I'm just saying stupid stuff. Okay, no, like, I, like I just said, like, did you verify your account? Who, me? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I did verify my account. Oh, okay, so that's not the issue. Holy crud, like... Missing one vital component, the world, the character, the laws of physics everyone's gonna break to make for cool moments you'll commission artists on the internet to draw for you. Oh boy. Leadership, initiative, a total willingness to have a bunch of children stomp on all your ideas in favor of doing funny memes and stupid scenarios. Despite all that, such a title... Your channel's chat will automatically delete posts if you are Without one, the game will not exist. So anybody and everybody should perform the duty at least... A chat options. Non-chat. No, there's no chat delay. What? Fine. Welcome, Welcome to, to a crack guide, guide to Dungeon Thank you, my section. That's how you'll finally figure out how to do messages. What? <laughs> the Dungeon Master, or Game Master, if you like clay in your soup, is the mind of the I was section by section, that finally how you'll learn how to do messages. Yeah, like... Stream manager? Maybe it's under stream manager. You call the shots based on how the rules work, or if you don't like the rules and say shoot that poop and come up with your own. Otherwise, how else are you supposed to know if your rules lawyering players get right. correct information and isn't just... Chats. Oh, okay, here we go. Moderations, actions, auto mod... Show so much just caught by our screen reader. Emo chats outside of the rules and the bridge between the players and the fantasy world they're playing and describing followers can only chat off okay awkward pauses. Everything they fuck, marry, or kill is through the context of how any followers you have to be incredibly deliberate with your vocabulary and respect the Oxford comma or else you might make right. any followers can chat. So I think like it may have done something when voicing them saying Shield mode is off, but try to type something if you can. Yeah, say something if you can in chat. What? Okay, emote chat only. I guess I gotta turn it off. Now, do you need all these fancy experiences? Okay, now try. Oh, and and well, wait, do, it, do that again, whatever you did earlier. Do it again. Okay, hold on. They're right there, right there. That's good. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Okay, all right. So, it seems Pippo's not working. But Pippo's the voice thing. It's supposed the voice it out. No matter what, you'll always eventually have to rely on the most useful creation of all mankind that can raise armies and fell nations. Uh, let me let me check streamer tools. Because inevitably there will be a situation where all your fancy okay. won't suffice, and you will have to learn. Uh, third party connections like Pippo is supposed to be working. Extensions. And how they do that can be summarized in one simple action. I think when a player wants to do something, anything, the DM is the one who decides if the Pippo just went pip. Of the roll of the dice. Then just about everything else is an extension of that one single responsibility. Extensions. Do it because one single responsibility is far too many. An extension. Uh, stream. Of that it, like I don't have the software for stream avatars. I need to get that eventually. Um. Stream stickers. Sound alerts. Crowd controls on there. Said uncle was a drunk rocketeer who eats horseshoe crabs. And when the players bring up how the plot and characters are oddly similar to Lord of the Rings, it's the DM's job to kick their ass. The scariest part about being a They must have got rid of Pippo for some reason. Holy crud. It's no longer on. It's gone. If the player character tries to come up with what they hear. If somebody eats too many beans and farts, you disappointed is what I am. Go to my extensions. 
dangerous hag or even the main plot because you moved it over there since the giant blower such is lost story progress this way was yeah pippo was gone prepare pre-written answers for every possible question the players could come up with i'm gonna have to stop pippo o stream is gone at some point in time we'll do something that'll turn what happened it off the map and you've got to figure out that yeah so like you pair or just roll with it while the players see your metaphorical config i guess i gotta go to configuration the configuration extension before you go live experience for viewers yeah it's gone it's the service is either down or they deleted the like service for it has a majority of the most common rules as far as actual content goes though the most baby or maybe you have to pay for it adventure one of these no it's free it's 100 percent free plenty of fapping about material for your players however if that's too much that boy safe word is making a campaign of your own the thing about safe words no it's free man in their track so it will require you to come up with most of the aforementioned plot like i guess i gotta like yourself which can take anywhere from a night of binge writing to never because you only ever think about your ideas and never write it down either way you go with once you have the skeleton of your campaign ready. I guess I gotta sign in as a component? Taken biology can tell you organs are gross and messy and can often go misplaced. So you just have to substitute a kidney with a moldy sponge for a bit while you go find Okay, now maybe it's active. Friends with the sponge and it becomes more effective than an actual kidney and you start to question everything you've ever learned in school. So good fucking luck figuring out how to balance spending time preparing to run a campaign. Because like, it should be active now. Do you spend entire weeks drawing maps, writing possible paths and dialogue options for characters down to the description of their cousin's boyfriend's dog's favorite chew toy or do you just spend the week doing some fapping about of your own and then spend the final half hour leading up to the session time frantically writing down bits from a dnd random content generator but hey once you get a game uh, the rest back the now, channel just take it all one step at a time and you can especially relax whenever the players start to role play and act on their own because then you can just sit back and relax and let them have their fun and you don't even have to do dialogue for any npcs or lore dump on it them should be active now steal the paladin's rosary beads yes the dirty whale's underbelly of being a dungeon master is dealing with the barnacle infestation that is being well, should be active. the babysitter of the group and then you gotta bring out the scraper Pippo you should be able to say something now and um it responds what yeah you're able to type but what you type in Pippo should be able to speak out of a pleasant smelling flower garden with the rankness of his workout stank this means that you cannot take a passive role as a DM you have control over the fan and if you see shit flying towards it you're gonna be expected to turn that fan off so that's a thing Smell like a medieval cat. I'll be back. Nature that said I still could not pop nature calls. I'll be back. It's explaining what it takes okay. to be a dungeon master. Not to mention what it takes to be a good yeah. dungeon master. And I've seduced enough tall folk to make Conchin Junga horny for me. But I believe the best possible way to show you what it takes to be a dungeon master would be a demonstration of those undergarment moistifying skills I possess. Lucky for your thirsty butts, I set up a DMD session with a bunch of nerds and demonstrate I shall. Alright, unexpectables, you walk into a tavern, a crowd is gathered, and everyone seems to be having a good time. Yeah, boy. Except the mysterious hooded figure in the center of the room that nobody except you all seem to notice. What do you do? I want to smash the barkeeper! I want to smash the barkeeper. Nobody wants to have a chat with the hooded figure? Who knows, it may tie into one of your backstories. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Dim, could you look over these notes I have about my backstory? It's only a few pages long, but I want to make sure to keep the authenticity of my homeland as the center point of my character development. What? Oh! Um. Everyone, that that is basically like every fan fiction writer ever, or when they come up with a. I I I I, I feel attacked now. Okay. I, I I feel so attacked now. I, I wow just 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 wow I mean I I've, I've been coming up with a head cannon story and like this hurts the difference between a fan fiction and a head cannon story chat is a fan fiction walks away entirely from the official continuity uh head cannon is still part is like a added s story on top of the official story or like he that's a head cannon story and um wow i feel so called out while not being called out ouch or just just joke at just 
Just run me over with a steamroller already, man. I'm a headcanon story creator as a VTuber, and, and I'm like, I've been creating a headcanon story, and it could easily be mistaked for fan fiction. Because, like, internet. Internet, everyone. It's internet. But, ow. Just, wow. Ow. Man, that hurts. Uh, you back, man? Just, I guess, I guess my moderator's still like, it, still doing his business. I mean, wow. I'm making a headcanon story after like eight for about 20 years. I just feel so called out. Joe Cat, why? Why do you do this to me? Ouch. Just, 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 ouch. And why did the news come up? Why did that come up? Oh, that's embarrassing. Ow. Uh, just, just, Joe Cat, why? Why? Oh, that hurts. That hurts. Like, that hurts anybody that's creating a story, folks. That hurts our pride. That, that hurts. Oh. Oh, Joe Cat, you are brutal, man. You, you're just brutal. Just back up over me with a goddamn, like, World War II tank. And like, roll over my butt. Like, use the treads to turn my body into paste. Why don't you? Ow! Just. Wow. Ow. Ouch. Ouch, man. Owie. Zowie. Wowie. Let's continue because, uh, this hurts. This hurts more than what Foxy is, could ever do to me. Ow! I mean, I'm not a surfer, but I like surfer lingo. Dwarven dad, anyone? I'm back. Yeah, uh, wow. Oh, Joe, Joe Cat just called me out without calling me out. I had a little bit of it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, ow, that wounds me. Like, okay, so, I mean, when, like, earlier he, he was talking about, like, how a character's backstory is so overwhelming for, like, D&D &D or something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and, like, how, like, the Dungeon Master has to, like, take it all in. Uh, you know I'm coming, you know as much as I do like the first two episodes of my uh, Final Fantasy headcanon story after the events of eight? Yeah. Yeah, so like he he 
He made a piece of art that dropped a huge amount of papers on the table. Like, oh, this is gonna be sequential to my character's backstory. <laughs> and, like, he drops, like, this guy drops an entire, like, stack of papers. Yeah, it's worth, like, 50 papers. Yeah, I know, right? And, like, I'm thinking, like, I'm a head cannon story creator after the years, like, five years after seven. And, like, the pre-origins of the universe, you know that now. Um, wow. I just feel like, like, I, I feel so called out, but offended at the same time. That hurts. That hurts me. It's like a, like somebody creating a headcanon story. Oh. Well, uh, I mean, you're bound to be told by somebody at some point. Yeah, I know. But from Joe Cat? From Joe Cat? Ouch. Ouch. Wait, where is Joe Cat? Like, I don't know where he lives, and I don't want to know, because, like, he's got his own life, man. But through this video, he, he just took the biggest shot at my creative pride. Wow. Just, just... Is Joe Cat one of your followers, I guess? No, he's not. He doesn't know I exist. He doesn't know I exist. Joe Cat is like what is the guy that created these videos. Oh, oh you mean you saw a recording of something that summarizes you? Yeah, basically, and that hurts. That hurts my creative pride. Ouch! That doesn't hurt your pride. It kinda does. Kinda does, man. This is what happens when you piss off the DM. Outrageous. This is unfair. Isn't it? And how does that make you? This is the classic meeting your opponent for the showdown strategy. Intimidated, but uh, at the same time, prideful. Like I want to kill it. After I kill it. And after I win, I go, all right, gonna go to the local strip club in the D&D &D session and go like, hey, darlings, I just killed the demon more. Who was a piece of this big D? <laughs> oh, hell yeah! Mm. Oh, 
Oh, I mean, I, 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 I'm not supposed to say that. I'm freaky like that, okay? I wouldn't mind, like, some demon hot mama that can also add an augmented part to her lower or extremities. Oh, heck yeah, I'm freaky, man. I'm freaky deaky like that. Let's go. I'm not freaky, okay? I'm not afraid to admit it either. I'm freaky. You have no clue. Once you get in my head, man, there ain't no going back. Oh, I daddy. <laughs> like, squeeze me harder, daddy. Make me make the sound like Goku does in Team Four Star Bridge. Make me squeak like a rubber ducky. In other words, what? Okay. Okay, so one thing, um, <laughs> uh, the, 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 this, this, this ukulele thing, uh, to everybody that watches my streams, never play the ukulele on, like, any form of content. Not anymore. Whatever you do, never play the ukulele on any form of content. It's bad. Let's continue. Okay, yeah. We're almost done here. There's only like how many minutes left? So we got it's like at the we got about eight minutes left, and then we can call it quits. Wow. Okay. Shut up! Evil is Maximus has you all completely surrounded and begins to speak. Okay. Is emoji chat a problem again? I just clicked them on that. Okay. I said I'd say yes, so they can go ahead and hit the Put him into a hot city girl. That's what I would have done. What? There's certain spell casting classes where you can check this, but I don't think you want to read lots and lots of pages to know what you do. <laughs> oh, that that is awkward, man. That is awkward. But, uh, I, poor Joe Cat, he's, he looks like he's about to burst a blood vessel. Shut up. Everyone shut the hell up! No, you can't talk to the Mark 
housekeeper. They ignored you. I didn't read your backstory. Your homebrew is rejected. There are no Goliaths. And pay the fuck attention next time I describe the goddamn seed. No, I'm not going to describe it again for you. You won't took too long, so your ambush fails and you fall to the floor of the tavern. All of your target runs away. <laughs> I never asked for a single one of you to roll, so all your dice go to waste. You don't get that gold, you're intimidating fails, and you stop being a dongly bongly rules lawyer for once. You two, stop comparing my totally original campaign to popular and historical media. I will sit the like great walkers on you. You don't counter spell, your seat is revoked, and no, you can't do any of whatever all that shit you were trying to do, you moldy min max and munchkins. Nobody listens to you, and the guard <laughs> shows you to arrest you for disturbing the peace. Hey, it's alright, Jograph. There's no need to get so hostile. Take a moment to talk to the players, I'm sure we can all- Nobody cares, Matt Mercer! <laughs> no, 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 and no to all of your plans. And evil as Maximus does get interrupted by yourself, because there's a giant mountain on top of the world, rock falls, everybody dies, and that's the end of the session because nobody wanted to talk to the obviously mysterious hooded figure in the middle of the fucking room! <laughs> Has that ever happened in your D&D sessions? Leave. I don't no. need you. I can find some of the players who would be happy to play the game I meticulously planned for them. Well, let me take that back. What? Nice. It happened once? I think we need a little feedback. What happened? Uh, well, it was a party, uh, white, like, the entire, our entire group, uh, died. We, we all died to like, you know, 50,000 arrows to the base, uh, we died to, we also died collectively to about, um, seven lightning bolts per person, and then we also died, one, one other party member got turned into like stone, how Medusa does, um, Okay. And so, it was, the person that turned into stone wasn't dead, but since the only spellcaster that could, like... Remove the pepper of vacation? Um, the DM just treated it as death. Okay. Wow. Uh... What did y'all do to take off the DM so bad? Uh, we were playing a level 11 campaign in Pathfinder. This, is, this wasn't D&D, &D. this was like when I was back in Pathfinder. But, uh, which is very similarly modeled to D&D. &D. But, uh, he was tired of us, um, tying up townspeople and, and, uh, beating them up with sticks and stuff. And so he's like, you know what? Y'all are going to enter a dungeon, and then we're going to basically do the equivalent to that to y'all. <laughs> oh, no! 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 No, my no, no. no! What did you do? Why did y'all do that? You know what? Y'all are probably bored. Y'all are probably bored. Uh, we weren't bored, we were just, uh, we were just very chaotic. <laughs> we wanted to ruin every course of action that our DM could give us. So if the obvious path was to, like, follow a brick road down to a castle, we would completely ignore it and go in the opposite direction. <laughs> Okay. So that the DM would have to come up with content on the fly. How'd that work out for you? How'd that work out for you, numb nuts? Like I said, he, he, he uh, killed all of our people. Makes sense, doesn't it? No, it doesn't make sense. We didn't deserve such things. We're, we're being creative with our minds, and we shouldn't be punished for it. <laughs> you know, I can somewhat agree with that, but when creativity goes too far, um, you gotta learn to stop, man. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, let's continue. Bunch of goblin breath weirdos. This is what you get for ruining the scene. It's all your fault, you know. You're welcome. Satisfied? What the hell else was I supposed to do? If they don't want to play the game I set up for them, then they don't deserve to play. What do you love, Kate? Maybe. What? Do you have to think about what do you love, Kate? Yeah, right now, me? I'm still watching this. AJ. Yeah. The game that you like to play? The other players are just as much a part of how the session goes as you are. Our d d is about how anything can happen. But I planned out this whole thing for them. I even got all the books and everything. It was going to be a sweeping story with awesome NPCs and an epic conclusion. But they're not doing what I need them to do. That's Wow. My neighbor, she sounded like she had a hell of a day. Sure, keep in mind where you want the game to go, but not... And maybe I should check up on her later, see if she's okay. Oh, like, my neighbor next door just slammed her front door again. Okay. She's been having, like, like a whole thing with, like, one of her ex-friends on social media. Things go wrong, and it gets boring, or imbalanced, or forget something important, or the game well, goes out. So I don't know what to tell you, because that seems like anyway. it's rather a hairy situation to be here. Yeah, I mean, I've been dealing with my own social media crud, you know? When you talk to the players, you can certainly try. I just ignore people. That's what I do. Got <laughs> Roll the dice, and he got uh, permission to say sorry. Game wouldn't be as cool or as fun as I thought it could be. I was too constricting on your agency, and shouldn't have stopped you from at least attempting to do the things you wanted. And I should have talked with you and maybe come to some sort of compromise on some of the things I was really stubborn about. Being the dungeon master is just really, really scary. There's so and it's scary and stressful. It, it definitely shows right now. Sometimes I can get a bit stressful, terrifying, and even that. But I'm willing to try it again if you want. Yeah. If you'd like to he is probably DMs. depressed and stressed. I mean, lately, Joe Cat kind of has been. So crappy. Because of people attacking him online constantly for one video. Yeah. I feel his pain. Not Joe Cat. Oh, neighbor, Elia, my female neighbor, yeah. She slammed the door, she's probably, like, she's still dealing with a lot of online social media crud from, like, an ex-friend betraying her. So, she's probably depressed, angry, and all that. She's a good person, she's just going through hell. Yeah. Okay. So that is Joe Cat's D and D the videos. Now I know, like basically almost everything, at least the hard basics of what I'm gonna have to do for D and D. Think I'm gonna go with a fighter. Give me a big ass sword. No shield. Give me a big ass sword with massive packs and muscles. And I swing that sword and big numbers go. Whoo! So you haven't <laughs> Basically. Basically. <laughs> yeah, there are times that the DM will say, now roll for fall damage because you'll accidentally. Uh, step on a panel or something, and then go straight. Or trip on a pebble. <laughs> yeah. Or step on a crack and break your own back. Yeah, and then you learn not to rest in Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I've actually learned a lot. Uh, I was just joking around. <laughs> Joe Cat, thank you so much for like all this. 
you you taught me a lot about Dungeons and Dragons right now, and now I at least know like gotta respect the DM and the rules. Uh, gotta roll for initiative for like all initiatives and decisions. Like I kind of knew that from like Brother Alpha Abuse's like a uh, little Dungeons and Dragons session he did with his own characters and Warhammer. That was fun. Yeah. And like they even he even has his own version of Yu-Gi-Oh called Ultra Super Hyper Mega Hyper Dimensional a uh, poker a uh, poker strip game. And, and that's his version of Yu-Gi-Oh and he turned the Winged Dragon of Raw into the Golden Warrior. He transformed an Egyptian god card into a divine warrior with wings. It's crazy. Games Workshop did them dirty. So, like, from my DM to everyone that has watched this stream here today, from the previous drama to that I've been dealing with, and I expose this guy's, like, unique attempts to, um, weaponized his community to now watching the Joe Cat videos. Thank you so much for joining me and my like obviously moderator. Uh, Joey, what do you have to say on this? Just remember I'm the one who's in control. This is my table. No. <laughs> you uh, you're the law on the boss. <laughs> like hell. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my fellow VTubers of all shapes, sizes, ages, and augmentations, I've been in command of Devin Lionheart. This has been Enjoy Rimbo. Join us like sometime tomorrow around 3 as I'm going to be playing Final Fantasy Rebirth again. Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. And. You can join us during the chaos, then. Hopefully, this puts... Like, it's, I know it's not going to put an end to the guy that's attacking me. More than likely, he's going to try to do it again. But, since the cycle of the internet, rinse and repeat. Thank you, everyone, for joining us here today. Please support me on my on all my social media platforms. My YouTube, my Twitch uh, stream, of course. Everyone, this stream is coming to a close. We're ending it now.